guys, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, Those Annoying, Annoying Vegans. Vegans! Here to wish you a happy new year. Happy 2021. Slightly belated. Yeah. It's our first video of the year. We've been busy. <laughs> if you've been following on Instagram, uh, you, you might have uh, maybe gotten wind of uh, the news. Uh, we lost Bubbles uh, a week ago. And that was really difficult. Uh, mm. Long story, but essentially she was pretty old. She was having trouble absorbing nutrients, which might have pointed to uh, cancer in the digestive system, according to the x-rays and blood work that we got back. So that was a very, very sad time for us. And now Kate is at the vet with an upper respiratory infection. <sighs> so yeah. our priority is always our, our family and so we're sorry we've sort of put these videos aside for a moment uh, but here we are kind of the um, sad and unfortunate but a reality of uh, adopting older animals um, is you get the joy of having them in your life but you also have that knowledge that they might not get as much time with you as you wish that they would. But that um, wouldn't change our decision whatsoever. No, of Some of the best friends that we've made in our animal companions have been uh, older animals. Mm -hmm. Bubbles was with us for approximately three weeks and we thought that her health was turning around. Um, and that's the thing that we have learned uh, since living with chickens is chickens will hide pain from you up until the it's, it's very last virtually moment. too late to, to do anything. Like chickens are very good at they, they will hide their pain, hide their discomfort. One she, morning, Bubbles woke up and she just wasn't well. Mm -hmm. She was perfectly fine the day before and mm -hmm. then the next day she wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then we took her to the vet and she stayed overnight and passed away at the vet's office, which was uh, something else to deal with, of course, mm -hmm. as you might understand. We wanted her here with us, but we didn't know she was gonna leave us because she was actually doing really well at the vets and she had mm -hmm. eaten a whole bunch of food and we left her there as a precaution. But it is thanks to our Patreon patrons uh, that these animals get all the care that they do get. As we've said many times, all of your Patreon donations go directly towards our animal care and animal rights activism. Yeah. So if you, if you like what we do, if you like the channel, if our content uh, gives you something positive in your life, feel free to become a Patreon patron. We truly appreciate it. And just as a reminder as well, everything we make from our Etsy sales also goes directly towards helping the animals we care for. So on to the topic of the video, can anyone ever truly be vegan? That is the title of the video, and so we thought we'd try to answer that question. We wanted to talk about this topic, uh, not only because it's something that comes up semi-frequently when uh, not only debating, but just casually talking to other non-vegans, but we've also heard this topic brought up from fellow vegans. They've DM'd us uh, saying that their friends or their family members have brought up this argument, this argument against veganism, so we thought we'd use this video to address it. Yeah, and effectively the argument is no one can live a life free from all harm so no one can truly be vegan. So then we suppose the conclusion to draw there is, so why even try? <laughs> First of all, that's what we call the appeal to futility fallacy. Mm -hmm. And that comes in many different forms. You might have heard some of these. One person going vegan is not going to change the world. Yeah, or like, if you drive your car down the freeway, you probably hit some insects driving your car. Or using paved roads means that you cannot truly be vegan because there are animal derivatives in asphalt. Mm -hmm. Or if you take certain medications that were tested on animals, then you're not truly vegan. Et cetera, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. It's basically, as the name implies, appeal to futility, they're saying it is futile to try to be vegan. So don't even try. The problem with thinking this way is if everyone is thinking this way. Because of course one person can't make a global change. Change starts with one person having one thought, taking one action, um, and that's spreading. So let's test the consistency of this argument and do as we always do and sub the victim. 
What if we were to say, well, you can't truly be anti-racist because you live in the modern world and slavery was such a huge part of the modern world's past and still so much of the modern world's foundation. So you might as well be racist. How does that sound to you? Or more simply, you know, just because you choose not to abuse children doesn't mean child abuse will go away. Or just because you choose not to abuse women doesn't mean women abuse will go away. Or just because you don't commit theft, that doesn't mean that theft will go away. All of these are just appeals to futility. Like, we know that. We know that one person choosing to do a moral thing will not change morality of the entire globe. Overnight. <laughs> of course not. These are all appeals to futility, and appeals to futility do not justify a single person actively funding violence and abuse towards animals. So what do we do when we come across an appeal to futility fallacy? Well, what we like to do is that instead of wrestling with the fallacy, we let it give us the opportunity to raise awareness as to how infiltrated our lives have become with the blood of innocent victims, from the roads we drive on to the drywall in our homes. I mean, by that logic, no one would truly ever be vegan because industry has found every possible way to inject dead animals and animal parts into the most mundane items. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're talking to your friend, be like, you know, isn't that crazy? Like, mm -hmm. isn't that crazy that there is that there are animal derivatives in our drywall, that there are animal derivatives in gasoline. It's everywhere. Sometimes even frozen vegetables have dairy in them. Why? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Gelatin also gets injected into a lot of stuff, oddly. Um, it's just, we live in a non-vegan world. Mm -hmm. We know that. We're the minority for now. And so we have to deal with reality on reality's terms and slowly start to shift the minds and hearts of the people. But let's remember, much of these uses only exist because of the animal agriculture industry. I mean, there are only so many parts of the animal that humans used for like direct consumption. Mm -hmm. So these industries are like, well, how can we make money off of all this other leftover stuff? This is how. And as far as living a life free from all harm is concerned, the fact of the matter is, is that being alive will cause a degree of suffering just from breathing or from eating or from living in a dwelling that you had to displace other animals to construct this dwelling i mean literally the only way to prevent all harm is to just not exist and that's not really a practical message to spread we do want more people to choose to go vegan but is it possible to come close to living a life free from harm we say, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. And where do we start? Well, yes, let's start with food, but let's remember that veganism is not just about food. It's not about food at all. It's a belief system that stands against animal exploitation in all forms. We know there's a very heavy focus on food as it pertains to veganism, but let's remember that it also means purchasing plant-based, cruelty-free, eco-friendly, personal care products, household products, clothing, reducing how much waste we create, etc., etc. All those are components of living a vegan lifestyle. It can often feel overwhelming just how much animals are used in everyday items, but do the best that you can do to eliminate or substitute those items. Veganism is about doing what's possible and practicable. Now, when we say that, we don't just mean, you know, throw your hands up in the air, um, and settle into your comfort zone and go, well, I'm, I'm doing what I can do or I'm doing my best. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to give up dairy. Oh, dairy milk, thank you. I'll buy this and drink it. That's not trying. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a great Jedi master named Yoda once said, do or do not, there is no try. So if it is possible, if it is reasonable, if it is accessible to you to get the vegan alternative or to simply not buy the cruelty-filled product, it is a moral obligation to do so. And the only way we can take proper action is by rejecting willful ignorance, by 
doing our research, educating ourselves, becoming aware of who we are giving our money to. So that's it for this video, guys. We hope you found it helpful. And if you wouldn't mind liking this video or disliking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing to this channel, and clicking on that notification bell, we would really appreciate it. It helps us spread the word. You know, videos like this are often inspired by you guys, by the comments that you leave, um, DMs that you send us, conversations, conversations that, we have. that we've had. So if you have any ideas, any topics you'd like us to address in a future video, let us know down below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. YouTube? What okay, do we bye. what do we do when we come across an appeal to futility fallacy? That's right. Arya agrees. Mm -hmm. And what do you say? Like when people say, "Oh, just because you have cats, you can't ever be vegan." No. Miss mm. Rose, you're out. You're out of frame. <laughs> come here, baby Rose. Hi. <laughs> Are you my ninja cat? Oh, okay, bye. Need to raise awareness as to how infiltrated. How <laughs> I am wearing my Boston hat. And no, I'm not from Boston. I grew up in Boston, but you I'm not Boston. from Boston. You're not from Boston. And that's where I got the Boston hat. <laughs> it was five years ago. Yeah. Was it five? Six? What was it? Next? No, New Year's Eve. Oh, 2015. 2015. So yes. That's when I asked you to marry me. Yeah. And you said yes, if I recall. For the record. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> <laughs> that was our engagement date. Yeah. And that's when I got this hat too. So we yeah. went and saw a Bruins game. Not that day. That was like Not your the first visit. Yeah, the first time I ever oh, went yeah. to Boston, I asked you to marry me. <laughs> that <was> True. <laughs> that's when my mom was like. <laughs> I love you. I love you. We gotta shoot another video. Yeah. It's gonna look like it's a different day and stuff because we're gonna change clothes, but it's a trick. <laughs> it's a movie trick. Your world.